Welcome back, and this is part two of our semi-centralized promotions in IPSA video. In the first video, we discussed the, the role of the company commander in the semi-centralized board process and how they use IPSA to make recommendations on the PCR. And ultimately, we, we really went over that there isn't much of a difference between the 294 and the PCR aside from the fact one's paper, one's digital. Um, but the two major, the, well, the single major difference is that the timelines have shifted. Um, now the pre-board process uh, is between the 1st and the 11th, where previously it was the 20th of the month prior where it began. So uh, I'd encourage you, if you haven't watched that, whether you're a commander, soldier, leader, or HR professional, I encourage you to watch that video. I'll, I'll pop an iCard up there so you can take a look and see that one first. So what we're gonna cover now is the role of the HR supervisor. It's key to understand that an HR professional in IPSA will not have the permission to do what I am doing, a, a regular you know, run-of-the-mill HR pro uh, user in IPSA. It has to be an HR supervisor. And the role of the HR supervisor uh, in the pre-board and board process is really, within IPSA, and it's, it really is, is very minimal to be frank, um, and this is, we're gonna break this up into a two-part series or a two parts of the video. The first part's gonna be the pre-board responsibilities and then the second part will be the board responsibilities. You know, we talked about in the other video how the, the commander would get the 294, the Alpha, Triple Alpha 294 from the Battalion S1. They'd make their recommendations and send it back. And then the Battalion S1 would consolidate the names of those four or five reports to make a board MOI uh, send out the notification for updating records, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, prepare the, the board documents for the board panel. Prepare the board proceedings when they were done. Uh, and then get their points loaded into the system. Now, with NFSA, rather than consolidate, you know, three, four, five, two ninety fours, we're just going to use the PCR inside of NFSA to create that list of people for the board. Uh, when then we'll conduct the board as we normally did outside of IPSA, and then we will load the results of the board into IPSA to send to the promotion authority for signature. So it sounds like a lot, and it's really just the same thing, just in a different, you know, just a different system. So here we're logged in as an HR supervisor, and we're going to go to the promotion consideration roster uh, while we're in the pre-board process. So again, this is between the 1st and the 11th of the month. So I'm going to click on nav bar, navigator, workforce admin, boards, board roster. Now I would have to do this twice. I'd have to do it for the sergeant and the staff sergeant board. So I'll click search. And again, I, I have four of them here, um, but that's just because of some things I had to do, some, some magic I had to work in the, in the training environment. But ultimately as an HR supervisor, you would only hopefully see two you know, E4 to E5 and then E5 to E6. And what the naming convention will be from HRC, which is who creates these boards, um, I don't know. Hopefully it'll be something similar to specialist to sergeant promotion, something like that. But we're gonna click uh, this board here. We're gonna close out the E5, or we're gonna prepare the, the E5 and E6 uh, board MOI. So when this screen pops up, we do see some information at the top, and just to recap from the video previously, um, we understand that it's uh, the name of the board here. We understand that it's a semi-centralized. We know that it's for uh, sergeant to staff sergeant. We do know we're in the pre-board process. Again, this will change as the dates change on the calendar. Uh, we understand that this is the May board because we see that it's a convened date and adjourned date in the month of May. And then finally, we see the zones of consideration. And these, again, are based on the template that's used. So there's an E5 to E6 template that's used. And that's what outlines the criteria to attend the board in accordance with 600-8-19. We can go down here and we can um, use this checkbox to go through and, and sort of filter out what we want to see. Um, as a battalion representative, I would tell you that if you're looking for a specific company, it might be quicker to type in the UIC to just see that company. Um, but for the purpose of this exercise, we're going to consolidate everyone in the battalion uh, to get their names for the board in Hawaii. So we'll scroll down and we'll hit the filter button. And when the screen refreshes, we can scroll down and see the list of candidates. And this list of candidates shows us everyone 
that a decision was made by the company commander on the PCR. Essentially, they filled out their 294 digitally and sent it back to us. Um, what you see here is that three of the four individuals were recommended for consideration. The rest of the individuals here are not eligible and that's just sort of a, a problem we're having in the training environment. None of the individuals have training data, right? So no, nobody has a PT score or things like that. And so that template, that board screens their records for those things and says whether they're eligible, ineligible, and it kind of gives you the reason. And this should look very familiar, uh, you know, maybe not necessarily the layout, but it should look familiar to the 294. It, it gives you the, um, you know, what zone they're in. You can sort by the zone by clicking on this button and you can see all of the people who will be MLI, all of the primary, secondaries, and so on. Uh, you can sort by any of, the, any of these links up here. If you click on, you'll sort by. So we're gonna click on board results. And what this should really say is board recommendation um, while it's in the pre-board process. Um, and I don't know that that's gonna switch um, but by understanding that we're in the pre-board process, we understand that we're looking at the individual's recommendation. So as the HR supervisor, uh, I would take this list of names, put them on an MOI, and get their records updated. Now that the S1 has gathered all the names and they've created their MOI, they've sent out notification for people to update their records, all of that's done. We're ready, pretty much ready for the board. We can come up here and click this Run PPW. This is going to generate a promotion point worksheet that we can include in the packet that goes before the board. And it will contain all of the relevant data with the updated points and et cetera, just like the PPW site we use right now. The board will be conducted outside of IPSA as it should be. And once the board is done, the S1 will prepare the board proceedings, um, make the list of who's been recommended and who's not, and then have the battalion commander or the promotion authority sign those board proceedings. Once that's done, we'll move into step two or the board process that we have to complete in IPSA. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and do that now. Now that the promotion board has adjourned and we've uh, prepared our board proceedings, the battalion commander or the promotion authority has signed off on them, we need to go into IPSA and integrate those individuals onto the promotion standing list uh, or not integrate them based upon the results of the promotion board. Uh, so this is really the board process of IPSA's semi-centralized promotions. So here I'm logged in as the HR supervisor. Um, I'm going to go to Nav, Navigator, Workforce Administration, Boards, and Board Roster. So the same place we've been going. And when the screen comes up, I'm gonna hit search and I'm going to go ahead and look for my board. Now, remember, we will have to do this for the E4 to E5 and the E5 to E6 board. So I'll click on the board I want, and when the screen refreshes, you'll notice now that everything looks the same as previously, except we are now in a board status of board, which means the menus should have changed because all of the pre-board activities should have been completed by now. And since it's in the board status, now we know we need to put the results of the promotion board against their record in IPSA. So I'll just hit filter as I always do. And when the screen refreshes, you'll see that um, the individuals who were selected to attend the promotion board uh, populate, right? And what we need to do is go ahead and choose whether they were selected for promotion or not selected for promotion by the promotion board. Now this is not going to promote them, this is going to integrate them to the promotion standing list and then based upon their cutoff score um, or their points against the cutoff score will determine if they are promoted to sergeant or staff sergeant. So all of these individuals were recommended. So we're just going to go ahead and hit promotion select, promotion select, promotion select, and promotion select. Now you may have noticed that Sergeant Franklin Cornelius uh, had been not recommended for promotion and that's because the company commander had changed um, or had not recommended them for promotion, but we went ahead and promoted them. They went to the board and we went ahead and promoted them anyway. So we talked about in the previous video or in the company commander video, how a commander could change their mind, right? So 
this may be a good example of the commander had initially said no, saved it, changed their mind at the last minute, but we didn't get a chance to make a change in the system. So, um, you know, we on the fly, we sent this in, the soldier to the board um, and they were recommended. So we can go here now and make them a recommended uh, any rate for the standing list. And finally, what we'll do is we're just gonna put the date that the board uh, approved the uh, integration, okay? Um, I would suggest that this date match the board proceedings, but there's nothing in the guide that suggests that it has to occur, that that, that has to be that way. Um, and it may be, it may not be in your timeline. You may have the board proceedings um, in for signature and you wanna get this knocked out. So that may not always be the case. Uh, but I would I would try to get as close to that as possible, and that's just that's just me. Now there is a feature here um, to add an attachment, and this was designed to add a copy of the board proceedings. What they realized, uh, what the IPSA team realized, was that it was attaching um, everyone's board proceedings from across the army, and that's just too much. So um, I don't expect that you will see this feature when IPSA goes live and you are doing semi-centralized promotions. Um, but that's what it was intended to do initially. So board proceedings need to be filed locally with the promotion authority in the S1. Um, and you can look at the reg uh, or the regulations to determine how long those need to be stored. I would uh, recommend that if you are a soldier that you get a copy of those board proceedings um, just in case once you get promoted, you can chuck them. But I'd always keep a copy of them just in case. And so once that's done, uh, we're gonna hit save and we're gonna notify the battalion commander that they need to approve this integration so that the soldiers become promotable, okay? So we're gonna just go down here and click save and the page has been saved. And just like with the other video uh, where, we, where the commander notified, we're gonna hit the notify button. And when this screen comes up, you can type in your battalion commander's uh, email address you could perhaps CC the uh, sergeant major or whatever, or the company commanders, and just put a little note, you know, sir, the board proceedings are uh, have been approved and are ready for your ver validation verification in IPSA. And then they will go into IPSA and uh, approve the board. And that's it, that's all we have to do. Uh, and our really our, our role as a HR supervisor, uh, semi-centralized promotions clerk is is over. Now, lastly, what we're going to try and do in our next video is we're just going to make a real quick video on logging in as the battalion commander uh, and approving the integration of those individuals for the promotion board. We've also got some decentralized promotions coming up uh, for, you know, E1 to E4 promotions. So be sure to uh, hit that subscribe button if you want to learn how to do those. We're going to do a commander and an S1 video on that as well. Uh, we're still pushing on uh, S1Net and MillTube. If you're on S1Net, go ahead and hit those stars at the bottom of the post. Go ahead and follow the stream. Leave me some comments. Thanks a lot. Defend and serve.